Hi folks, welcome back. This is session six and in this session we will be talking about generalized linear models and the exponential family. So in part one we are going to start talking about the exponential family, okay? So this family is just a simple generalization of the previous distribution that we have seen and it has uh, a lot of appeal because it is really easy to model and it's itself conjugate so you have a lot of um, tricks that you can play when you are working with this particular type of distributions because you don't have to be worried about trying to find the, the conjugate of, of the other ones and we will see that most of the distributions that we have worked with they are just uh, exponential they are just exponentials right so they, they will belong to this exponential family and we can change their particular form to adjust to this one so what it is, so as you can see here, the exponential family is nothing else than, than an exponential, right? With respect of our data and our parameters. And this is multiplied by some hx function that is just uh, an, uh, a function that depends only on the data. And our always uh, partition function that is just the normalization function of the, of the distribution such that uh, it just sums up to one when we, when we do the, the summation or the integral with respect of the whole spectrum, right? And it has a, this, this sort of shape in which we just push the normalization constants inside of the exponential that is really, really useful. And that, that is the, the, accumul the accumulant um, function that, that is uh, used, right? So as you can see, this partition is just defined as the integral of the whole distribution. As, as we have been doing before, and these x's, it just leave uh, they just live in, a, in an xm space, right? And our parameters have some d d dimension. And just to make this a little bit clear, um, okay. But before we move that, so we're, we're going to be discussing about these parameters we, we, within this session, and we will call this theta the natural parameters or the canonical ones, and this phi x is just a function of x. That transforms our data and, and returns the sufficient statistics, right? So you will remember these sufficient mm -hmm. statistics. Mm -hmm. They are the different um, values that that we need to to use to represent the whole distribution, right? So, for instance, if you remember from the the Gaussian with the two sufficient statistics, with the mean and the standard deviation, I'm able to define the whole the whole distribution. I don't need the the, the set of data to to do it. Okay, so. How can we use this, for instance? So in the book, in the machine learning a probabilistic approach, chapter six, there are uh, several of these examples. I'm going to just quickly go through one over here and we're going to talk about the Bernoulli distribution, okay? And if you remember this Bernoulli, it's, um, uh, it's a function of X and some parameter mu. And it is just mu of x when it is part of the, uh, when it is one class or uh, one minus mu when it is the the other one. And basically, I, I can put this into the exponential form by just taking the the exponential and the log of this. So I can take the exponential of the log of this, and it will be basically the same shape, right? And this is the exponential of x log of mu to apply it right away so it is easier and um, one minus x log of mu right oh sorry one minus mu and that is the the, the shape that we have that, that we will be using okay and the the whole idea here is to transform this into into shape into something that is really close to, to what we had before right so how we have how can we transform this well first we can just make it into a vector form so if we use that transformation this is the exponential of and I'm just going to group my uh, my x's so I can just do some indicator function so this is x equal to uh, 0 and x equal to 1 times my logarithms, right? So this is log of mu and this is log of 1 minus mu. 
right? So this is actually my 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 uh, fee because it's a function of uh, of x, right? And this will be my theta because is the, they are the parameters that I have. So um, they just call it like this. So this will be uh, fee transpose, and this over here it will be my my theta. Now you see like this, this has the same shape as before, but this has some, some problem because it is over parameterized. I have more, um, more dimensions that I actually need because I only have one, one parameter. So we can do some trick over here to try to reduce that size and, and, and reduce this over completeness over here. And I'm going to start by just changing the shape of my, of my, of my distribution over here. And then just doing some algebraic trick by taking this x and just pushing it into the same, into just one, one uh, expression. And that would be 1 minus mu. And this multiplied by the exponential, sorry, the exponent. No, yeah, the exponential of x logarithm of mu 1 minus mu. So as you can see here, it is exactly the same thing, right? Like this is uh whoop. okay, sorry, oh I'm missing one one minus x over here, right? So this is basically the x part of this one minus x, and I'm just having the one here. So I'm just grouping these two together and just separating these, and then I'm doing the same trick. I'm going to do the exponential of the logarithm just to uh get back to the same part. And this is uh, the same representation as we had before, but now it is not over complete because as you can see here, this is still my phi and this is still a function of theta. So I have my, my theta here and my phi of x, but now I don't have this over completeness over here. And this part, it just, uh, it will be incorporated into my, my normalization function, right? My, my, partition function. So um, if I want to, to solve for this, uh, you will say that theta, theta here is going to be my, my, my function over here, my logarithm of mu, mu minus mu. And I can solve the here for, for, for mu and then try to find out what, what it is, right? So I can take the, exponen the, exp uh, the exponential of this. So this is e up to theta of mu or one minus mu. And then I can solve, I just will multiply this over this side, expand this, so this is e up to theta um, minus e theta times mu equal to mu. And then I just pass the mu over there factor again, and then divide everything else back into the other side. So this is basically mu e theta one plus e theta, right? And I, if you if you know like if you remember from the other the, the other uh, sessions, this is basically the sigma, right? I can just divide by e theta, and then I have my e minus theta here. So this is the sigma with respect of theta. And this is the relation between my my sufficient statistic mu and my canonical uh, and my canonical parameter, right? I have a way of going back and forth, and I can define also my my a, my a theta, my cumulant, and this cumulant is one minus uh, my mu um, one plus a theta, right? Because this is my my normalization function, right, that, that I just found. So A is just the logarithm of, of that particular set over here. Um, so I can simply uh, solve for this. So remember that this should be the inverse, right? Because this set over here is, is the inverse, one over Z, and I have just this one. So this should also be inverse. So this is minus one here. Now we can solve this, and uh, we can do as as before, right? I can just simply multiply this over here, and then subtract. So it is one plus e theta minus e theta. That would be just one over my denominator. 
and this is uh, the inverse, right? So this is, should be only one plus e minus the uh, sorry, oh plus plus theta over here. So this is my my theta and this is my cumulant, right? And with those two um, shapes, I can use it for for doing something else. Okay. So th this this exponential family has a lot of properties that we can exploit. So in in the next part, we will see how we can use this, for instance, to to work with the log partition function.